Welcome to Configure Always On Availability Groups. So before we can set up an Always On Availability Group, there's four new terms that we need to know. These terms are Availability Groups, Availability Replicas, Availability Databases, and Availability Group Listener. So I'm actually going to start from the bottom of this list and work my way up. So the Availability Group Listener is how users are going to connect to the database. This is simply going to be a network name and IP address floating out on the network that's gonna be running on whichever server is hosting the current production copy of the database. Availability databases are simply the databases that are being protected by the Always On Availability Group feature. Availability replicas are the instances which are hosting the Always On Availability databases. Availability groups are the logical container that are hosting the Always On Availability Group database and replica. So you have an availability group, that group contains multiple replicas. Those replicas are all hosting multiple databases. You can have multiple databases in a group. A database can only be in one group. An availability group will typically have one availability group listener. That listener will have one network name and typically one IP address, unless you're using some sort of fancy multi-site configuration. So here is the basic topology for an always-on availability group configuration. We've got two sites, one in Los Angeles, one in Miami, Florida. We've got two databases configured on three servers. We have two servers in Los Angeles, one in Miami. Each one of those servers has a copy of the AdventureWorks 2012 database and a copy of the AdventureWorks DW2012 database. The two servers in Los Angeles are being kept in sync with synchronous data movement. The server in the Miami data center is being kept in sync with asynchronous data movement. So as you can see, it's a very flexible feature with a lot of configuration options available to you. Now, one of the really nice things about always on availability groups is there's a lot of cross support with other features. This includes a lot of the features that are not supported in the database mirroring feature. This includes things like file stream, file table, column store, full text indexes, replication, both publication and subscription, contained databases, traditional failover clustering, policy-based management, database maintenance plans, auditing, user-defined server roles, transparent data encryption, and the SQL Service Broker. Always On supports all these other features. So this isn't like a new feature that's only supporting a very few things. It's supporting the entire SQL Server feature set. Anything you can do in a normal database, you can do in an Always On availability group protected database. This was obviously done intentionally because for always on availability groups to be truly useful, there can't be any limitations. Setting up an always on availability group is fairly easy. It's a few step process, and unless you're getting into some of the big nastier configurations, it's a fairly simple process to walk through. The first thing you need to do is install and cluster Windows. Windows must be clustered on all the machines that are gonna be hosting availability group replicas. This means that all those machines need to be within a single Windows cluster. So this means we have to follow the rules of Windows clustering. All the machines must be in the same Active Directory domain. They don't have to be in the same site, but they do have to be in the same domain. We then install SQL Server on all these various machines as needed. Now the SQL Server instance does not need to be clustered. There's no requirement for a clustered SQL Server instance. So we don't have any requirements for shared storage or anything like that. This means we can either cluster Windows and install SQL Server first because we don't have a dependency from one to the other. Once those two things are done, we can then go ahead and enable the Always On Availability Groups feature for the SQL Server instances. We then create, attach, or restore the databases to all the secondary replicas, and then we can configure the Always On Availability Group. Now, if you're simply going to walk through the wizard that I'm going to show you in a minute here in the demo, that's going to take care of the create, attach, restore databases for you, as well as configuring the availability group. It's going to handle all that in one shot for you. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we set up an always on availability group database. I've got four servers here in my configuration. I've got four servers running SQL Server. These machines are named always on one, always on two, always on three, and always on four. I've also got a fifth machine, which is a domain controller. That's not going to be used for anything other than the fact that it's running as a domain controller. So the first thing you have to do when setting up always on availability groups is enable the always on feature. 
Unfortunately, this is not done through T-SQL. This is actually done through the SQL Server Configuration Manager. So I'm running Windows Server 2012 here. So I click Start and just type in CON. And the first thing on my list here is going to be the SQL Server Configuration Manager. Now, this can be done through PowerShell as well, but the easiest way to do this is simply through the Configuration Manager. Simply click on SQL Server Services and open up the SQL Server Service. On the Always on High Availability Group tab, simply click on that. And if your failover cluster is set up correctly, you'll have a check mark that you can place here that says Enable Always on Availability Groups. Simply check that box and then restart the SQL Server database engine. Once that's done, you're ready to set up Always on Availability Groups. Now, I've already done that on my four machines because I don't want to sit here and wait for all four of these instances to restart. Now, you don't need to restart the entire operating system. You just need to restart the SQL Server instance. Once that's done, we can close the Configuration Manager. We're done in there. To set up the Always on Availability group, we start by simply opening up the server that's got our production copy of our databases and simply open up the Always on High Availability and then the Availability Groups folders. Now, the nice thing about this configuration is just like database mirroring, we can do this live on a production system with little to no impact to the production system. The only real impact we're going to have is while we're going through this setup process, we're going to want to disable our traditional transaction log backup jobs. That's because we need the transaction logs to stay in the transaction log file while we go through this whole process. Right click on availability groups and click on new availability group wizard. Once the wizard opens, click Next past the welcome screen, and then we specify an availability group name. I always recommend naming the availability group name the same thing we're going to name the availability group listener. So in this case, I'm just going to call it Sample1. We can then click Next and specify the database that we wish to use. Now, the nice thing here is we can specify multiple databases or just one. Whichever databases we want have to say meets prerequisites next to it. If it doesn't say that, that means it is not available to be protected by always on availability groups for some reason. Simply click the link that is the status and that'll tell you in plain English what the problem is. For example, the Northwind database says database is mirrored. If we click on that, the database is currently involved in database mirroring and cannot be added to an availability group. Nice plain English error message. In this case, we're simply going to replicate the scale out database. We select it and click Next. This wizard looks exactly the same if you've got one database or multiple databases. We're now going to set up all our replicas. We're going to set up always on two, always on three, and always on four. I've now got all four of my replicas listed in my availability replicas list. I'm going to set up always on one and two for automatic failover which also means they're going to be synchronous. If they're not synchronous, they cannot be used for automatic failover. You can have up to three synchronous servers, two secondaries, and the primary, when it fails over, is going to be configured as a synchronous copy. I can set up my readable secondaries however I wish to set them up. I'm going to set them all up for read intent only. This means you're not going to be able to read the secondary replicas of these databases unless you specify the read intent connection string when you connect. Looking at the endpoints tab, our endpoints are already set up on all four of our machines. In a new configuration, they won't be, and you'll have the option of specifying the port number, the endpoint name, and whether data encryption will be selected or not. I would always recommend data encryption be turned on unless you're 100% sure the database you're replicating is already protected. The endpoint name is simply for administrative purposes. You can name it whatever you want. When I first built these virtual machines, I was using database mirroring. That's why my endpoint name is mirroring on the first three servers. By default, always on is going to name the endpoint HADR underscore endpoint. The port number is 5022, just like the database mirroring endpoint. That's because this is the database mirroring endpoint that we're going to be using for always on. We can specify backup preferences. We can specify prefer secondary secondary only, primary, or any replica. We can also set priorities as to which servers should be taking priority for the backups first. Most enterprise backup products do not recognize this backup setting. Whatever backup product you use will need to be configured to read and follow these requirements. 
the maintenance plans within SQL Server do follow these rules as they're set up. On the Listener tab, you have the option of creating the Availability Group Listener now, or you can create it later. The default is to create it later. If you wish to create it now, you can by simply selecting the Create Availability Group Listener, specifying the name, the IP address, and the network mode, either static IP or DHCP. For the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to create it later so that I can show you how to create it later. We're going to go ahead and continue this demonstration as part of the next video.